What's going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. This is Darian with Darian the Dev. And in this video, we're gonna go over my six month update for my second software development job. If you guys are brand new to the channel, if you're into tech, entrepreneurship, coding, startups, anything like that, make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe. It really helps me stay motivated to put this content out for you guys. I wanna thank everybody who's been following the channel for a while now or who's recently subscribed. We just hit over 500 subscribers and I cannot thank you guys enough. I swear, like, this is the most subscribers I've ever had on any of my YouTube channels that I've tried in the past. And I've got a video coming out where I'm gonna talk about some things that I've failed at in the past. So um, I wanna make a video about that. But this is a really big accomplishment for me. Thank you guys for being here as a part of this journey, starting all the way back when I first started bootcamp. So where we are today here on this channel has been super amazing. So to be sitting here talking with you guys about my second software development job update is wild because I remember making the video about getting my first software development job. And then I remember making the video about quitting my first software development job. And I remember making the video about getting my second software engineering job. And now here we are doing a six month update already. So there's been a lot of updates on this channel if you guys have been here you know, for a while now. All right, so one thing I've had to focus on a lot more is the use of dependency injection. And it's a concept that I was familiar with before, um, but I never really had a chance to like use it or I didn't have a lot of use cases on like knowing when and how uh, to use dependency injection. So now, um, you know, anytime we're creating objects, you know, we never use the new operator. We never create like our new up, you know, is what we call it in C-sharp, but we don't new up objects. We're always instantiating new objects through a constructor. So um, I think that's really interesting. Um, just getting like more reps with that and just knowing that, that knowing the actual use case for why dependency injection is important in object oriented programming. So that's one big thing that I've, I got a lot more experience with over the last six months here. Design patterns is the second thing that's really big that I've gotten a lot more experience with and specifically the factory pattern and also the singleton. You have to write bad code before you know how to write good code. So design patterns are almost hard to grasp until you run into a situation where you see the same type of instances happening over and over again, or you run into the same type of problems in the code base over and over again, or you just have to write the same code over and over and over again. And then you'll start to figure out best practices or, you know, a better strategy of where you won't have to duplicate, you know, certain code in your application. So learning the factory pattern of singleton has been really interesting because like, for example, in the, in the case of a singleton, I'm learning something now called the uh, inversion of control containers or IOC containers. So it's just this idea that we can like dynamically decide what types of objects to get created at runtime. And, you know, again, it's just another way of implementing the singleton design pattern, but there's multiple ways or many ways that you can, that you can implement and use these patterns. And that's why I'm saying that I'm realizing that you have to run into a lot of code and just touch a lot of code bases and, and write a lot of code yourself before some of these design patterns really like stick in your mind and before you really can understand when, where, and why you need to use them. So I guess going forward, um, I'm just really starting to embrace the fact that, you know, I need to learn these things and that, you know, I'm learning them through what I'm seeing at work. And it's it's not something that, like I said, just comes naturally or just very easily, um, maybe to new developers or newer developers, but it's something that will come over time as you just write more code and. Um, you know, as you write more bad code and find find ways to make it better and to improve it, um, I think that's where design patterns start to you know be more important. The third thing is um, CI/CD pipelines. Everything is everything is cloud based at my job right now currently. So of course, like if you're dealing with any sort of cloud based architecture, you're gonna want to make sure you have high availability that your systems are always up and that they're available for your users and that your data can always be accessed and things like that. And so having a CI CD pipeline is gonna be super important to making sure that your application is tested every time it deploys and that it's gonna you know, be up and available and not gonna break in your production environment for the people who are using your app. So working with CI CD pipelines in a cloud environment and also just different technologies on how to deploy through a CI CD pipeline. So, for example, we have some applications where we use uh, TEFS or Team Foundation Server to deploy our applications. And there's other ones where we're using a C-sharp build tool called uh, Nuke, where um, that is our CI CD tool. So, you know, just seeing it from a lot of different angles, a lot of different, you know, ways 
of you know deploying software and a lot of different tools to use for deploying and then also just writing my own CI/CD scripts or just getting more familiar with writing CI/CD scripts myself so aside from my job i've been using gitlab as you guys have probably seen in my my video about uh, the difference between gitlab and github but you know i've been using gitlab a lot lately and you know updating CI/CD pipelines over there and just playing with them and writing different stages through the pipeline adding stages to the deployment script is something i've been getting a lot of practice with on gitlab so yeah i would say ci cd is, is a huge thing because again it's just it's a big part of making sure that whenever you make changes to your application or anybody for that matter makes changes to your application that you know with this ci cd pipeline that you know that you know once it passes all the stages or that it passes all your tests and things like that that once it makes it to production that you can be sure that it's not going to break that it's going to interact properly with the you know code on the production server already so yeah um getting more practice with ci cd pipelines has been a huge part of this last six months for me number four kind of touched on already but it's cloud services so we're based in azure and um there's a, there's so much to know in all these cloud services right so between azure aws uh google ibm cloud and there's a bunch of other ones i just recently found out that i think alibaba also has a cloud service so there's so many different cloud services they all offer similar but different you know tools that help you develop applications and deploy them in the cloud but not even just that man you can do everything in these cloud services you name it um like checking on the health of your your applications and adding like logging services to it you can add like iot devices to your applications and just there's just so much you can do data migrations um there's just so many things that you can do with all these cloud services but at the same time it's overwhelming because there is so much that you need to know and so um at my job we use a, a huge variety of different azure services and for me, um, I've just been getting up to speed and trying to understand how we currently use them all in our applications, but not even just that. Also understanding like what they do, how to use them myself, and just being more efficient as a cloud developer. So uh, one of the things I'm doing right now is studying for my Azure Fundamentals A through Z uh, 900 exam. So I'll be making a video on that as well. But um, that's been a huge part of my role this year is just been getting better at, you know, cloud development, cloud services and, and understanding how to use them, because right now we're no longer in a hybrid environment. We're in 100 percent cloud based environment. So that's been really interesting to learn. And then number five, guys, the last thing has been APIs. APIs is a huge thing that I've had to, you know, get way more familiar with in the last six months because everything we do like i said is interacting with microservices like i mentioned um i work for our auto data company so we work with a lot of car data and you know we get all this data via apis from either services that we create or from the actual manufacturers of the vehicles themselves and each one has their own rules that they have to play by and you know and you have to you know know how to work with those apis and um kind of deal with the little quirks and the finicky things about them but it's made me a lot better with authorization and tokens and um you know just understanding how to deal with rest apis especially ones that are really quirky and also dealing with data formats so you know every api is formatted differently like their data when it comes back so just understanding like how you need to take the original data that they give you and how you need to set it up in such a way that you can use it for your own purposes and things like that so dealing with api calls just hundreds and hundreds of times a day over the last six months has really helped cement that idea in my mind and make me a lot more comfortable doing you know api work and uh just being a full stack developer in general um using c sharp so yeah guys those are pretty much my my five takeaways from this last six months um from my job you know i just want to point out actionable things that i've been focused on learning over these last six months there's a lot of things that i also left out but i just wanted to focus on the main things i feel like will probably help you guys out there that might be wondering like what you know what is a new job in software engineering or cloud development you know my second job how does it compare to the first one so um, just to give some perspective right there guys. I hope it helps and if you guys are starting like your first job or your second job as a software engineer or Something like that. Leave me some comments down below Let me know what you guys are doing at your job and what your role kind of entails your responsibilities And if you're interested in going to coding boot camp or you're thinking about going to a coding boot camp Check out the description box down below where I'm giving away my free intro to coding boot camp course It has everything in there that I wish I knew before I went to coding boot camp and then giving away hundred percent for free all it costs is your email address 
make sure you guys go check that out. Um, there's also a link to the private Facebook group where I put all the other additional resources that I don't put in the description box of these videos. So make sure you guys go over there and get added as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Darren with Dan the Dev. I'll see you guys in the next video, all right? Peace.